Hi everyone, this is your divine appointment and this is Patricia Brand and um, we've been on a subject matter that has really infiltrated this world and um, very few people are speaking. I have kitty cats every so often there's a hair floating around <laughs> so you have to excuse me for that but um, um, the subject matter that I'm sharing about is has been about the occult and because we're living in such a time as we are um, we're having movies we're being in, inundated with movies uh, full of witchcraft um, stories and mysteries and uh, dark um, just dark movies and stories and even on television horror, horrific stories is one even about Satan's son um, we're, we're just really being hit with a lot of horrific things that are totally not of God and um, I don't really like sharing these things it's not fun for me I'd rather be sharing the loving Word of God and the wonderful things that he can do in our life through signs and wonders and miracles and all the sweet things he does when we we live for him and we dwell with him and he's such a good God but we have things that we have to abide in the Bible is our manual for life and it gives us it's just like if you're baking a cake you know this is you know if you're following a recipe or if you're fixing a car or you're building a house you have to follow the, the, the right path of how the instructions are to go. So you have people who know how to build houses because they've been gifted. And this is their, um, this is their livelihood. And you see the same thing with the Word of God. The Bible is their manual. And many, many, many have strayed away from the Word of God. Very sad. This is very, very sad. Um, I wanted the Word of God in my life from the time I was very young. I loved the things of God. I loved knowing that I had an angel sitting next to me all the time and a guardian angel watching over me, one and the same. <clears throat> Excuse me, but this was told me when I was very young um, by a Catholic school that I went to. And, uh, we weren't Catholics. We, I am not a Catholic. I am not a Methodist or a Lutheran. I am a uh, born again Christian I just walk with God and that's enough I mean that's all we need to be we don't need to be in a denomination there's many interdenominational churches or non-denominational churches and I um, I have always preferred them because it's they're more um, freer in the spirit and uh, full Bible teaching and so you still have to search but you know my search was always in that um, area because that's how I found the truth through Billy Graham and through the churches um, in the area that loved and believed in um, serving people in that area of truth and receiving salvation and knowing the truth and being set free. So um, I got off a little bit on that part but I just want to share with you that you need to know you need to know the Word of God. If it means go to a, you need to be in a Bible teaching church and you need to find one that's spirit filled because it's important that we are sp filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And it's a very vital that we have received that gift of um, the heavenly language so we can pray and know that God is praying through us that perfect, beautiful prayer that we can't possibly know. We pray what we know to pray and then there comes a stopping place we just don't know what else to pray because we have covered all the bases and then there comes a place where we just know that God has all the rest of the answers and He knows the unknown and that's when we pray in the Holy Spirit because He knows the things we don't know and that's God praying through us. That's why it's so vital to receive the Holy Spirit. With the, not, the baptism of fire is what it's called and it's a wonderful thing. And um, I have been through, um, done deliverances in people's lives and I have taught people about um, these things that I'm sharing on today and yesterday. And um, there, there's very little knowledge but when you're an intercessor, you learn these things, and I've always been an intercessor. And because I'm an intercessor, um, it's a deeper place of prayer, and it's an automatic thing. People will come to people who are intercessors because they know they pray. They know they hear from God. So anyway, what I was sharing yesterday was um, 
the scripture that was talking about um, first it was first John 2 15 16 warns us love not the world and you know raise your children your family and tell people that this is what they need to have it's first John 2 15 16 the Word of God warns love not the world neither the things that are in the world um, if any man love the world the love of the Father is not in him and all that, uh, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the, um, the lust of the flesh is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And then there's Proverbs 16, 18, pride goes before a fall and destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So pride goes before destruction. So if you're real prideful, that's a very, you know, that's what caused um, Lucifer to be thrown out of heaven was pridefulness. He decided he was better than God, so he was thrown out of heaven. And, um, you know, if you know your Bible, you'll know that's what happened. And he was thrown into the world. Um, and that's why we have the demonic forces that we have in the world today. And But that was why he fell, because he was full of pride. He thought he was better than God. And um, so anyway, he was thrown out of heaven and destruction and haughty spirit goes before a fall and that was what he had a destruction and a haughty spirit goes before a fall so sooner or later you're going to fall if you're one of those that are walking in a wrong manner and you're you're haughty you've got a bad attitude you think you're better than everybody um you, you don't have love you just have criticism and you have no patience and you um just don't have a depth of god in your life there's no love and um this is prideful, extremely prideful. And then there's 1 Timothy 6, 9, 10, it warns, but they that will be rich, fall, rich people, people that are very rich have a very hard time with temptations and having things that they really don't need. And it's a snare to them. It says in Timothy that, um, but they that will, be, that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, a snare meaning a trap from the enemy. Uh, like an animal falls into a trap and they're caught, well, that's just the same thing. They're a snare. The enemy will snare them and catch them, and um, they're done. They're finished. They're, they've been you know, taken in by the dark world because they're never satisfied. When you have everything you want, you, it takes a lot of uh, strength to walk with God and walk in, in a pure life before Him and do the right things. With um, in that in mind, I also want to share about abortion. Abortion is... Um, is a sin, a horrific sin before God, and it's dealing with somebody um, who has had an abortion. I have to deal with them with great love and um, um, emotion uh, because we're dealing with an emotion of guilt and shame. And when they've asked forgiveness from God, you know, there's many times because their walk, they've committed this sin and they're not strong, otherwise, they wouldn't have committed that sin. Uh, they're tormented by the devil for, for the rest of their life because of the murder that they've committed. And actually it is murder. And today they make very light of things that are sinful and are not of God. And of things that are simple, I mean, something as simple as black and white murder and life. Um, life is life and murder is murder. When you kill somebody, you kill somebody. When you bring people, bring life into somebody, you, you are walking in, in life and in light. So it's very simple. And... Um, They've cho chosen an agreement uh, with the covenant of death and have allowed Satan to come into their life. And um, there's a scripture that speaks of that, and it's uh, Satan, sees a <clears throat> Satan sees as a child sacrifice to him. That's how it's looked at in the dark world. It's called, it would be like a sacrifice um, to Satan. In Leviticus 18, 21, and 25, when the children of Israel would sacrifice the children to the fire of Malek, Malek, a pagan god, which is a um, people that call themselves pagans, are, are non-believers, and they would um, sacrifice their children to Malek, a pagan god, great judgment came upon them, and the land was filled with sin and was destroyed because of their practices. Um, People that have multiple abortions really need help because their sin is so great and they're living with this over their head continually. And um, if you're strong in the Lord, you can ask God to forgive you and um, you can seek some prayer from maybe a pastor or somebody you know that's 
does this kind of ministry, but I would suggest, I, I think that a lot of times you really need to seek deliverance <clears throat> and healing in a healing ministry. And um, deliverance and healing is vital because you've, you know, once you realize that uh, you've murdered, you know, a child and this is a sacrifice to Satan, it would be considered in the Bible days as a sacrifice to Satan. And when you sacrifice a child, uh, today it's the same thing. Who you're sacrificing, you've killed a child, and it is it is it is a sin against the Lord, and um, it is a real horrific thing. And people have taken that very lightly, and they think it's nothing because everybody seems to think it's okay, and it is not. But you can seek help. You can because God loves you and He cares about you, and He wants to help you. Um, receive um, forgiveness. He's a forgiving God and he wants you to receive forgiveness and he wants you to receive healing in your life. But you have to know that it's a sin. You have to know it's wrong and you have to repent. And you know when that child gets to heaven there's God is taking care of it and that's the most beautiful thing for you to know is that when you're really repentant and love God he'll, he, he's, he's cared for that child and he's got people in heaven, beautiful precious people that have never had children and desired to have them and even family members are caring for that for that child. Um, I won't go into that subject matter but God has taken care of that child so you don't have to worry or fear but the main thing is to get their forgiveness from God and yield yourself to him with your whole heart and um, you know I'm, my time is almost up and I just wanted to share that Saul entered into great sin um, and he consulted with a um, actually in the Bible here and I'll read a little bit of it we don't have a lot of time but maybe a minute Saul um, said to his servants find me a woman who is a medium so I may go to her and inquire of her and his servants did that and he inquired of a medium which was a sin against God and then he was told by the Lord um, um, because you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord and nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek Therefore the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you and into the hand of the Philistines, which was their enemy. And tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also deliver um, the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. Immediately Saul fell full length to the ground and was dreadfully afraid because the words of Samuel, and there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no food all day and night. And... Um, goes on to say that um, the next chapter goes on and says that he gathered in chapter 29 actually it's first Samuel 28 17 and then it's chapter 29 of first Samuel and you can read about it he lost his sons he lost his he lost his kingdom and he and the Lord allowed David to take over which is King David that we know and we love and um, because he did walk with God and he was the apple of God's eye, but Saul was in sin. So, you know, he consulted with a medium, which would be a fortune teller. So there's death involved in it. Eventually, there's just going to be a horrific part price to pay when you dabble with the dark side. So any of you that are asking these questions, yes, what to do? is you need to get out of it and you need to really pray and if you have members of your family that are dabbling with these things you need to really make sure that they're going to a church that understands these things and that they're under teaching that helps them to learn that these things are wrong teenagers especially are getting very involved in things that are not of God um, you need to really make sure you're in a good church a good Bible teaching church and be on the right track with the Lord God bless you today this has been your divine appointment I hope this has helped you God bless you. I love you. And I just pray for you right now, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray that all my friends um, would make good decisions, would be in your word. And if they haven't received you, Father, I ask them right now to receive you and, and just ask him in. to say, Jesus, come into my heart and life. Forgive me for all my sins and take my life and use me to your glory. And I, I will go to a Bible teaching church. Help me to find one. And Lord, be with me and take my hand. I love you, and I thank you for it, Lord Jesus. And you know, if you've done that, God will help you. I love you. This has been your divine appointment. Stay close to God. He really loves you. Bye-bye.